Welcome to part seven of our review and summary of Timothy Alberino's book, Birthright, The Coming Post-Human Apocalypse and the Usurpation of Adam's Dominion on Planet Earth. Today, we're looking at chapter 12, The Post-Human Paradigm. On June 26th, in the year 2000, the White House announced the mapping of the human genome. President Clinton referred to it as this most wondrous map. The human genome is the blueprint for Adam's genetic architecture. The successful survey of the human genome was destined to open the floodgates of genetic modification and redefine what it means to be a human being. The consummation of the human genome project marked the beginning of the end of humanity as we know it, but mankind's transformation would not occur overnight. Technologies have been emerging at a breakneck speed. What Google's chief engineer, Rusty Kurzweil calls the law of accelerating return. The so-called Grin technologies are the four technologies that will catalyze the post-human revolution. Grin stands for genetics, robotics, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology. And that's Ray Kurzweil, by the way. These four technologies will facilitate enhancements to the full spectrum of human biology, body, mind, and soul, and give birth to a post-human human being, Humanity 2.0. Powerful multinational corporations are already preparing to merchandise the upgrades of our species, providing eugenic and psychic enhancement for wholesale design. Ray Kurzweil's exponential growth model project foresees that instead of experiencing 100 years of progress over the course of this century, we will experience the equivalent of 20,000 years. We have never had the debate over whether we should act to preserve our basic humanity before it is too late. Unbeknownst to the public, in universities and policy think tanks across the globe, professors, scientists, futurists, politicians, and lawyers have been quietly laboring to lay the moral and legislative groundwork for a post-human paradigm. The U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights will need to be amended to ensure rights and privileges for new forms of humans, including genetically engineered entities. In August of 2017, 18 geneticists announced they had successfully edited out an inheritable heart condition in a human embryo. We can only imagine what kind of breakthroughs have been achieved in countries with little or no regulation where aspiring Dr. Moreau's can experiment to their heart's content. Geneticists are now predicting that more than 1,000 known inherited mutations can be eliminated from the human gene pool. DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, races to deploy genetically enhanced super soldiers on the battlefields before the Russians and Chinese accomplish the same. In 2018, a team of geneticists working at the Southern University of Science and Technology in China created the first genetically modified babies. They edited out a gene to make babies resistant to HIV, smallpox, and cholera. Scientists all over the world have been creating genetic chimeras by blending the DNA of various species. In 2011, the Daily Mail reported that British scientists have secretly created more than 150 animal-human hybrid embryos. 
A previous law in 2008 legalized the creation of a variety of hybrids, including an animal egg fertilized by human sperm. Cybrids, in which a human nucleus is implanted into an animal cell, and chimeras, in which human cells are mixed with human embryos, with animal embryos. In 2019, the Spanish newspaper El País published a story about a team of researchers who successfully bred monkeys with human brain cells. In the same year, Chinese scientists announced that they had engineered monkey-pig hybrids and intended to grow human organs inside the creatures for transplants. Researchers in the United States recently created a mouse that is 4% human. Genetic modification represents only one facet of the emerging GRIN technologies. Advancements in the fields of robotics, artificial intelligence, and nanotech are occurring at the same astonishing speed. A recent headline in August of 2020 stunned the world. The groundbreaking new material could allow artificial intelligence to, emer to merge with the human brain. Try to imagine genetically enhanced cyborgs, cyborgs fighting on the battlefield of the future or competing with your children for the best jobs. Jack is out of the box and he ain't going back in. In the philosophy of technology, there's a theory called the technological imperative, also known as the inevitability thesis. What this means is once something is set in motion, the developmental progression of any useful technology is unavoidable, unstoppable, and irreversible, even if it poses a catastrophic risk to society itself. In 1917, the pioneering research of a British physicist, Ernest Rutherford, laid the groundwork for an artificially induced nuclear reaction. It eventuated the splitting of the atom. What began as a modest pursuit to understand the building blocks of matter ended in the frenzied proliferation of a weapon so powerful that at the height of the Cold War, both the United States and the Soviet Union could lay waste to the whole earth many times over. The sequencing of the human genome was tantamount to the splitting of the atom. The information age has transformed human society in profound ways and facilitated the rise of another Tower of Babel paradigm on Earth. Men of every tribe, tongue, and nation are becoming increasingly unified in language, binary code, and purpose so that nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Today, we are on the cusp of the next transformative age, the hybrid age in which the conflicts of hybridization of emerging technologies will give us the tools to radically alter the socio-biological construct of the human species. In the hybrid age, men will merge with their machines to transcend the limitations of their bodies. The computing technology we hold in our hands will be integrated into our brains and we will surf the web with our minds rather than our fingers. Synthetic organs will be ready for installation in medical facilities when our natural organs fail and cybernetic prosthetics will replace our lost or damaged limbs. Nanobots will patrol our vascular highways to destroy pathogens and provide maintenance. 
diseases will be cured by editing defective genes and superhuman abilities will become possible through engineering new ones. Our babies will be designed rather than conceived and artificial wombs will emancipate women from the bearing of children and the curse of Eve. Some of it will surely come to pass, but not without a price. Today, there is a growing movement of biohackers who are setting up high-tech, do-it-yourself biolabs in the basements, kitchens, and garage of their homes to rewrite the DNA of living organisms, including themselves, with the power of CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R, -R, gene editing technology. <coughs> There is a rapidly expanding international community conducting a broad range of genetic experiments in the privacy of their homes and then uploading their DNA modifications to the web for the communal benefit of their biohacking comrades. In this way, the community can crowdsource genetic engineering while avoiding the red tape that impedes university and corporate research. Some biohackers create glow-in-the-dark beer. Others enjoy genetically modifying their pets. Yes, they make them glow in the dark as well. The common goal of the biohackers is to arm the masses with gene editing technology and incite a global biohacking revolution. This is both exhilarating and alarming. It is exhilarating because personalized medicine may finally break the chokehold of big pharma on the necks of the infirm and their physicians. It's alarming because DNA modifications would then become as easily accessible as aspirin and ibuprofen. Among the many tools in the Grin Tech toolbox, genetic engineering poses the greatest threat to the preservation of humanity. Whereas robotic AI and nanotechnologies will eventually enable significant upgrades to an individual's physical and cerebral capacity, germline genetic engineering will enable permanent alterations to the hereditary profile of the human species at large. Within one generation, engineered inheritable genes can propagate through the human populace on planet Earth and irreparably corrupt the genome of humankind forever. Man now has the tools to exercise his own will over his own evolution. The birth of the overman that Nietzsche spoke of is inevitable. Within a few generations, post-humans will walk the earth. When the time arrives, our Promethean midwives, Apollo and his consorts, will make their grand appearance corresponding with the previously defined alien threat to guide the post-human through the birth canal and into the world. The transitional phase between human and post-human is called transhuman. Professional influencers who support this are the transhumanism movement, also known as Humanity Plus. The primary motivation of the movement is eternal life. The pious injunction that we can improve the human condition through the use of advanced technologies conceals a dark underbelly, the immortality or immorality of Nietzschean philosophy. Directed evolution is an expression of Nietzsche's will to power. The very goal of transhumanism 
is post-humanism. Hence, Christian transhumanism is a contradiction in terms. The work of the Messiah is meaningless to those who intend to evade death through the salvific power of technology. This hubris is emerging unabashed in the public arena. Zoltan Istvan, a leading transhumanist, ran for president on the Transhumanist Party ticket in 2016. In 2017, NBC News published an article, Godlike Homo Deus Could Replace Humans as Tech Evolves. Its thesis was that Homo sapiens, far from being the pinnacle of creation, is a temporary creature, one soon to be replaced by Homo Deus, or God-man. This is a vision or portrait of apotheotheism, the synthesis of Darwinian evolution, Nietzschean philosophy, and Luciferian theology. If a portion of humanity evolves into God, into God-man, what happens to those who elect to remain Homo sapiens? Clearly, a new dystopic class system will be instituted at the emergence of the God-man otherwise known as the overman. Those who choose to be against this will be considered Neanderthal humans. Futurist Barbara Marks Hubbard, channeling her spirit guide, forecasted the hostility in store for these Neanderthal humans and says that the co-creative human, the human who is, who is an inheritor of godlike powers, the destructive one-fourth to them must be eliminated from the social body. She says that God selects and we, the enhanced people or evolved people, will destroy. We have become the grim riders upon the pale horse of death. Revelation 17 says men will be compelled to worship the image of the beast and receive his mark or face the dire consequences. The mark of the beast is more than a chip implanted in the hand or a barcode imprinted on the forehead. To worship the image of the beast and receive his mark is to become like Apollo, a post-human hybrid modified with genetic markers of the golden race. The advantages of being reborn in the image of Apollo with extended life and godlike powers will be extraordinarily enticing. The vast majority of people will eagerly line up to receive their evolutionary upgrade, but not everyone will comply. Some will resist and pay for this resistance with exclusion from commerce. This is again proof that the birthright of Adam cannot be wrested from us by force. It must be willfully abdicated. The mark of the beast, therefore, will be a choice advertised with the same allurement as the fruit from the tree of knowledge, eat and become like gods. Are we willing to surrender the very hallmarks that make us human in order to extend our lives? In truth, we have been deliberately provided with the blueprint to build the mechanism of our own demise. Behold the cunning of the serpent. We were first convinced to deny the biblical origin of our species so that we might be persuaded to discard the image we bear by means of the technology we were guided to develop thereby divesting ourselves of the dominion it guarantees. Grin indeed. Just like Esau, the descendants of Adam and Eve are about to sell their birthright for a bowl of stew. And this is precisely what we'll look at in the next and final installment in this series. What that birthright is, grand 
future vision promised in the word of God to each one of us willing to accept the gift. This is Gumbo Craig, and thank you for sharing this walk out of Babylon as we perceive future visions and distant echoes. All glory ever and always to Yahweh, the Most High God, the source of everything good. Shalom.